want to talk about metaphors and story. Um, during the economic situation that we've been going through the past year and a half, I've been listening very closely. Well, well first, let me just, just, just define what a metaphor is. This is exactly what Andy, and he and I didn't even put our heads together on what we were going to talk about today, but this is exactly what he was just talking about. A metaphor, metaphor comes from the Greek word meta, meaning uh, over, and um, pharon, meaning carry, carry over. So it, it's this idea that you use. It's a thing that is not the thing. Here, I could. It's the process of describing something as if it were another thing. And we understand it. It's important to us because we use it to understand, we use something that's in our, our domain of experience in order to understand something that is outside of our domain. So in communication, metaphor is, is extremely important. It's the art of communication. In, the, in this economic thing we've been going through, I have been listening very closely, as I know you have too, to all the news reports. And they use economic crisis, a recession, a depression, depression. Okay, think of, what you have to do with a metaphor is think of all the things that that thing, that that word means to you. Depression. The, eco the economy is in free fall. We're sinking, we're tanking, we're in a meltdown. And actually last week I heard an entire newscast on NPR that compared the economy to the sinking of the Titanic. And it used, did y'all hear this? It used uh, pieces from the movie, the Titanic the movie, uh, interchanged with comments from economists. <laughs> The, the latest buzzword I'm hearing uh, about AIG is, you know, for a long, long time it was, oh my God, we're giving them golden parachutes. And just last week, this term haircut, they need a haircut. Or just think of the term haircut. Is, is that an effective term for what AIG executives really need? <laughs> The people who control our language control our future. George Lakoff, who wrote the book Don't Think of an Ele Elephant, he said this, he said this really succinctly and beautifully. You know, you know the idea behind don't think of an elephant. If I tell you not to think of an elephant, like no matter what I'm fixing to tell you, do not think of an elephant. That is the one thing you're going to think of. And so the Bush administration used this so beautifully to their advantage. You, know, you all know this, the Healthy Forests Initiative. No child left behind. You know, it should be the no forest left behind. Um, clean coal. Clean coal. coal. Coal can never be clean. <sighs> I, when I heard at the Republican National Convention the I think that's where it was, all those folks in that room start chanting, drill, baby, drill. I knew that there, there could never be a bunch of us who just instantaneously erupted into drill, baby, drill, or anything else. Solar, baby, solar, solar. Somebody had to plant that idea in that room. And so our job as communicators is to plant ideas. About five years ago, I was invited to a gathering called New Metaphors of Restoration. Kathleen Dean Moore at the University of Oregon wanted us to look at the metaphors we were using for restoring ecosystems and see if they were working. Most of our metaphors for restoration have been medical in nature. The forest is healing, it's recovering, it's renewing itself. This is our prescription for restoring it, for restoring forest health. Watch the rebirth. But a cut over pine flatwoods is not sick. Once an ecologist I know asked a woman what she thought of a certain prescribed burn. She had worked in the burn unit of a hospital for years and years. It just sickens me, she said. Here's another bad metaphor. I don't know how to manage a forest, but I can mow a lawn. And so when we look at climate 
cri the climate crisis, climate chaos, global warming, climate destabilization. Is the globe a menopausal woman with hot flashes? <laughs> Is it a temperamental shrew, stormy? I was thinking about record setting. I actually used it last night. We've been setting records, but setting records is a great thing. You ran faster than everybody else. And a fire hose of information, the one Andy just said in his talk. We, have, we were barraged with a fire hose of information. Russian roulette, the gun is pointed at our, at our grandchildren. Very interesting. We, I am asking you to consider new ways to understand and communicate the importance of, of the climate crisis or climate chaos. Not just the efforts to combat the crisis, but the meaning of those efforts and the language that we use to communicate the importance of the work. Um, what metaphors are at work? How do the ways we talk about it and the goals shape what's possible for us to imagine and do? And in this work, what new methods or outcomes must we imagine? What new directions must be, we take? What are the dominant metaphors we've been using? What new ways of speaking and thus thinking do we need? We're gonna talk about this. If you're coming, if you're staying for the writing workshop tomorrow, we're gonna do some brainstorming about this, but I wanted to introduce it today in the whole group so that everybody starts listening. Let me tell you, if you are the person with the, with the cool metaphor, you get the spot on TV. Listen to every clip that's put on TV or radio and in the newspaper, and it's the person who's come up with the interesting idea in the form of a metaphor. And I think Andy is exactly right that we are going to have to think about, okay, so if tipping point is not working, if climate emergency is not working, then what are we going to use? Now the second